Hi folks, take a look at this shape. Anybody recognize it? It is the golden ratio. What is the golden ratio? It's a pretty cool number I've actually been fascinated with for a while. It shows up in science, it shows up in nature, it even shows up in industrial design. What I care about today is this shorter shape right here so that we can create and walk through how to model this in Fusion 360. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. New component, golden part. R for rectangle, sketch on our top plane here, our XY, and I'm just gonna sketch something right like here. Now to follow along today, so one thing that's important is you not create extra dimensions. T take a look. I'm gonna click my first one as 0.25. If I double click that again, see how it says D1 colon 2.5? It's important, because what happens in Fusion, if you create extra sketches and delete them, it kind of skips numbers around. So this, I'm gonna dimension and just say D1. R for rectangle, same thing again. This time it's D1 and D1 yet again. So we've got two equisized rectangles, only one variable so far, or input. R for rectangle. Now I'm going to sketch an odd, just anything right here. This is D3 plus D1. Same thing here, D1. R for rectangle. Sketch it over here, D5 plus D3, and then, yes, you could be using equal constraints or lots of other ways to skin the cat here. R for rectangle, let's see where am I at, D7 plus D5, I think. And I think I just need one more, R for rectangle, D9 plus D7. D9 plus D7. Left click, drag a box around everything. Hit X on your keyboard or toggle normal construction. I've turned everything we just did into construction lines. I kind of wish there was a way I could hide the dimensions. It would make the, what I'm about to do a little bit easier. S on your keyboard, I want to do an arc, ARC, three point arc. Now this is important. The first point of that arc is right here. The second point, I'm going to walk up until I snap into the corner. Then I want it to be tangent. So see how I, when I move right to there, the top section of that arc shows that it's snapping tangent to the box that's inside. Click OK. Notice that it's black now. Do they still have uh, beta? I can't remember. Sketch is still in beta, so go into your name, preview, and make sure sketch is checked. When it's black, that means it's fully constrained, so there's nothing I can do to move this around. S, three, S, S, arc, three point arc. Do the same thing, first point, second point. Hover back until it snaps, right there. S, arc, these two. Now I'll create, see how it would snap there? I'll create one out of place, see how it's blue? The easiest way to fix that, tangent, click on the blue arc, and then you can actually just make it tangent to this black one. S arc, S arc, Oop, that one didn't snap. We're done, almost. Stop sketch. Take a look at the part we're trying to make, though. What's interesting about it is that it tapers along. We're actually going to do this as a Wednesday widget on how do we machine this. Because if you think about it, you don't have any surfaces that are normal, too. So it's a little bit tricky. How do you flip it? Anybody have any guesses? So how do we create that lofted shape? Construct plane along path. What's my path? Click this first line and it's not where I wanted it, but if you just drag this back, it becomes uh, a plane that's at the start of that path, which has zero, basically zero offset from the start of that path. Perfect. Click OK. Right click, <laughs> weirdest motion ever, but once you get used to it, it works. Right click, sweep up. Same thing, plane along path. Click here. 
and just drag it to the end. Click OK. So I've now created two planes at the start and end. S, center rectangle. What plane do I want to put that center rectangle on? I want to put it on the first plane that we just created. So click right here and just pay attention before I click on it. We're going to want the center of this rectangle to be actually at our origin. So I'll orient it left. Click here and we'll say 0 0.25, 0 0.25. I'm using tab on your keyboard to alternate between the two dimensions. Enter, done, and it's black, which means it's fully constrained. And you can see it is at the start of that first arc that we created. S, center. I love this stuff. Oops, wrong plane. Stop sketch. There we go. S center right here. And orient it front view. Click here and we'll say 0 0.875, 0 0.875. Enter, locks it in. So I've got a curve and I've got the starting size and the ending size. Create loft. The profiles. Click the first rectangle, the little guy, and click the second rectangle. So it lofts a shape between those two. So what it just did there is correct. What I want to do is change it to follow the curve. Uh, I didn't realize this, but instead of rails, or it took me a second to learn this myself, instead of rails, you want to pick a center line. kind of makes sense when you see it, um, but again, I'm, this is where I become a newcomer to CAD. And what's the rail? Click on this right here, and click OK. We are done. How cool is that? Using loft, using rails or paths, very powerful thing, and you can see pretty darn easy too. But for any of you guys out there that were math nerds, I'd like to think I'm a little bit of a math nerd. You know, you see this in Fibonacci, or it is Fibonacci, and you see it in nature when you look at patterns. It's a very cool thing, and I remember being blown away when reading this book. Highly recommended. Uh, link in the video description where industrial designers have recognized um, that this is a very powerful ratio, this 1.618. I think it's even used for things like credit cards or certain, just it's a shape that we as humans find beautiful as it manifests itself in, in products and so forth. So I hope you guys learned. Hope you enjoyed. Come back uh, for the Wednesday widget. We're going to machine this guy out. Take care, folks. See you soon.